social ownership, economic democracy, mutual aid and solidarity, core principles which form the foundation for the cooperative movement. Given these values, it should come as no surprise that the movement has strong ties with socialism. Despite this, some people still seem to be under the impression that there is no correlation between the two, or that somehow the two have been divorced in recent history, an assumption I will quickly debunk. As we speak, roughly 1 billion, that is 12%, or 1 in 7 of the world's population, and approximately 40% of the North American population, are members of market-based, publicly-owned, democratically-controlled enterprises known as cooperatives. In true socialist fashion, co-ops of all varieties are intrinsically linked through solidarity, financial support, education, advocacy, policy, and history, and are based on a specific set of principles, and each abides to the creed of one member, one vote. Among 3 million co-ops worldwide, there exists 300 plus federations in over 100 countries which are unified in solidarity under a single global umbrella known as the International Cooperative Alliance. The ICA, which includes the producer co-op branch known as SOCOPA, advocates on behalf and provides aid to co-ops worldwide. The ICA traces its roots back to a mutual society made up of 28 industrial workers known as the Rochdale Society of Equitable Pioneers who composed the Rochdale principles in 1844 as a way to address the dire economic conditions of Britain at the time. These pioneers were an extension of the Owenites, the first ever socialist movement, which was the backbone for both the labor and cooperative movements in early 19th century Britain and even influenced the International Workingmen's Association, which gave rise to Karl Marx and the phenomena of socialist internationalism. Their name derived from famous Welsh reformer Robert Owen, who is often accredited for being the founding father of both socialism and the cooperative movement. The first cooperative congresses were known as the Owenite Congresses and included several of the Rochdale pioneers, as well as, reportedly, Robert Owen himself. The pioneers would meet at the Rochdale Socialist Institute, founded in 1838, which was the 24th branch of the Owenite Universal Community Society of Britain. Socialist presidents of later co-op congresses, such as George Holyoke, were documented right up until the turn of the century. The historical link between the two, socialism and the cooperative movement, is well documented and established. Socialist influence in the co-op movement can still be seen to this day. Flash forward to 2018, former British Labour Party leader and socialist Jeremy Corbyn. Too many areas of our country are being held back by low investment, low quality jobs, low wages and slow growth. Inequalities of class, race and gender are very stark all across Britain. We promised to put economic power into the hands of the many to transform the economy uh, from top to bottom, doubling the size of our cooperative sector, putting key sectors, water, energy, rail, and Royal Mail into new and democratic forms of public ownership. It's not when I win an election, it's when we win the election. It's empowering of people. And you've never placed for co-ops in your manifesto. Absolutely. Um, co-ops are something that's intrinsic to the British Labour movement. And across the world, they're massive. There's a billion people. One in six of the world's populations are either users or members of a co-op of some form. So what we're proposing is national investment, 
proper taxation for the very richest, and empowerment of communities through local spending, local investment, and empowering people to determine their own lives. Social justice, socialism. Corbyn is not alone. Socialist organizations the world over have embraced co-ops in the current era, as well as American socialist intellectuals such as Noam Chomsky, Richard Wolff, and Gar Alperovitz. Co-ops played a vital role in the market reforms of Joseph Tito's Yugoslavia, as well as Cuba in the past decade. They have also been crucial to the socialist-dominated surge of worker co-ops in Argentina since the 1990s and are essential to the economy of socialist Rojava in northeastern Syria. I could go on and on. To deny the link between the two, co-ops and socialism, is simply to deny history. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more content.